Hi DIYers, Joe from Alarm Grid, and today we're going to talk about how to wire a TG1E. Now the TG1E or the Telguard Express is a third-party communicator that you can attach to many different types of alarm systems to give you a cellular connection. This is what the Telguard looks like. The, the unit, it's super convenient if you have an older system in your house <clears throat> or something that you don't want to upgrade to a newer system that does have a phone connection as this does connect to the system via the POTS connection. This does allow many, many different types of systems that don't have an integrated cellular communicator or a way of communicating uh, over the internet or any, any newer communication modes other than the phone line. This allows the system to communicate over cellular and it even has a remote app that uh, <clears throat> the end user can log in and control their system with. It's super convenient. It does work well for what it is. It's not as good as a proprietary solution or a solution that the company that makes the alarm system produces. So if you do have, let's say, a Vista system, we always recommend going with a <coughs> cellular communicator or another type of communicator that's made for the system, as it's just going to give you a better experience. Anytime you have a third-party device that's attaching to your system that's not meant for the system, it's most likely not going to be as clean or as smooth as an experience that you would have with just parts made from the single manufacturer. But with that said, if you do need to use the Telguard, it works great. And we're going to show you how to connect it to a Vista panel today. Now it's going to connect the same way to any different kind of panel. It just has to get the phone connection or the POS connection, the tip and ring, and it also needs to get power. And with the Telguard, the, uh, <clears throat> the newer models of them, you actually can connect the wires to the unit directly from the system. The older models, such as this one, you will need an RJ45 connector to actually complete the connection to the system. Now, if you have a Vista panel installed in your house or an older alarm system, there's a very good chance that you do have an RJ connector installed. And I have an RJ connector right here. Uh, this is what the box looks like, as you can see. It's probably going to be mounted somewhere near your alarm system on the wall. And inside of the RJ, there's a whole bunch of terminals. <clears throat> Basically, what the RJ does is it allows the phone line that comes into the house, it goes into the RJ, and then it goes out to the alarm system. Then it goes from the alarm system back to the RJ, and then it goes from the RJ out into the house. What this lets it do is that if the alarm system needs to communicate, the RJ is going to cut the line to the house and allow the system to actually speak out. If the system was communicating and you picked up the phone, the house phone, and you, may, and you started talking, you could screw up the communication because it's analog and it may not get to where it needs to go. So this just helps ensure that your alarm system does send its alarm communication when you get a signal that it has to communicate. Now, this thing, if you do have this installed in your house, there's going to be one of these kind of cables attached to it. At first glance, the tip is the same as an Ethernet cable. This is the 8-pin connector cable that is used for the RJ, and it has a jack right there. The way that this is going to be likely uh, wired is this will come into your alarm system, and this is going to have a 4-wire connection that's going to connect to the POTS terminals on the panel. Now on our Vista panel, our POTS terminals are these four right over here. And the wires that connect to them are the brown and gray, and the green and the red. It's the incoming line, tip and ring, and then the outgoing line for the tip and ring. Basically allows the phone line to come into the system and then come out. So in the event that the system does have to communicate, it can hit the RJ, shunt the line, and then send the communication without being interrupted. <clears throat> so let me actually, I'm going to grab a screwdriver and I'm going to throw these on just so we can take a look at how it's actually supposed to look. So now that we have our RJ wired on the phone connection area, you can see that we have our brown and gray and our green and our red. So this is the incoming tip and ring, and this is the outgoing tip and ring. Now, if this is installed in your house, it's gonna be, it'll look something, something similar to this. <clears throat> and you'll see the, the RJ with the phone line coming into that, and then it goes down to the system. If you do have one of these installed, it's really helpful because we're going to use this to connect to the TG1E. So this is going to be mounted somewhere outside of the box. What you're going to do is you're going to unplug it from the actual RJ. And then if we look at our, our Telguard and we open up the unit, 
you'll see that right here, there's a jack that has eight pins that will allow you to plug in the RJ cable. With the RJ cable, you can actually supply all of the connections that you need for the Telguard unit. It does also need power. And what we're going to do to get power is we're going to use the orange and the blue uh, wires off of our RJ cable to connect to the onboard DC power coming off of the panel. That's going to send power down the cable to our, uh, to our Telguard unit. Now, if you don't want to do that, on the Telguard, this little terminal block, this comes off. It'll actually be off when you order one if you pick one up. You'll see right on the board that it says GND and DC. If you're not able to use this cable to provide power for this Telguard unit, you can attach wire to the terminal block here on terminals uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then connect those directly to the corresponding terminals on our system that we're going to connect to. Once you wire them into your uh, terminal block, it's super easy just to push this right down onto the unit, and then you should be good to go. But now let's connect our power uh, to, the, to the cable and then attach it to our Telguard. What I'm going to do also is I'm going to fully power out our Vista unit because we don't want to be installing stuff on the live powered terminals with the system powered on. So let me shut this down. I'm going to unplug one leg of the backup battery. I'll do the backup power too. And then I'm going to hit the power strips over here. <clears throat> So now we're going to connect the, the, the DC power to the, uh, to the wire for the Telguard. Now the DC power on our Vista system are terminals 3 and terminal 4. These are the same terminals that you use to power keypads, power devices, and anything else that you have connected. And the wires that you're going to use from the, from the RJ cable are, terminals, are wires 2 and 7. You know this because if you look at the actual jack itself, and you probably won't see this from here, the wires, they go uh, in numerical order from left to right. And I can see from looking at it that number two is our orange and number seven is our blue, just to confirm it. So we're going to take two and seven. And as you can see, it might be kind of a tight fit. If this happens to you and you can't get the wire over onto the terminal block, what you can do is we can actually cut these little tips off and we can splice a wire onto it and then connect it to our power terminals over here. But if you don't want to do something like that, because it can be a hassle to splice wires in, what you can do is you can actually just cut the, uh, the sheeting of this wire and then pull it and it'll open up. We actually used a pair of, uh, a pair of pliers before and we kind of dug into it and then I used my fingernails just to pull it down a little bit. And as you can see, that's going to give us a little more extra wire and we will be able to get over to our terminals. So to correct something that I said before uh, about the system, our power terminals are actually terminals number four and five. And as you can see, this is where the black and the red wires are, and this is our ECP bus. So I power down the system 100%, and I'm ready to now connect the Telguard to the, uh, to the Vista system. Our RJ cable, we are connected, and we're all set up over on our pot side. But what we're going to do is, for the power, we're going to take our blue and we're going to take our orange wires and we're going to connect these to terminals two and or terminals uh, four and terminals five. Pardon me. The orange wire on our RJ cable is going to go to the negative. So I'm going to put this on terminal number four right here. I've already loosened it up and I have it prepared for the wire. I'm just going to slip the, uh, the spade connector right underneath and tighten it up. And then our blue wire is going to go to terminal number five, and this is going to be our hot or our power. So again, I have this terminal loosened up for the wire. I'm going to put it right in here, and we'll tighten it down. So now we should be all set up. On the other end of our RJ cable, you can see that there is a port, or there's a mod plug right in our uh, Telguard, where this is going to plug into. And usually you want to slip this in the back and then plug it in so that you can put the cover on. But I want to show you what the lights look like. So I'm going to plug this in with the cover off. It's just like a regular Ethernet cable. 
So we're all plugged in, and now we just have to give power to our Vista system. So I'm going to walk over here and hit the transformer. And as you can see, our Telguard does have lights. It is coming on, and it's going to go through its boot-up process, and you'll be able to start setting it up and get it ready for activation. That's how to wire a Telguard to a Vista system. If you do have any questions about this process, if you do have a Telguard that you want to get activated, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can call us at 888-818-7728. Number again is 888-818-7728. Head over to our website, www.alarmgrid.com, or send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to see future videos when we post them, hit the notification button below, and we'll send you an update when we do so. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.